Hello everyone, welcome to Science Concepts with Bhavna Garwal. In today's video, we are going to discuss some amazing points about viruses. So here we have almost everything you need to know about viruses. So this is not necessarily a video for like students who are pursuing medicine, but this video is for everyone who wants to know the basic information required about viruses. So let's have an intro about viruses. Did you know that the name virus was coined from a Latin word which actually means a slimy liquid or a poison? So that is how the word virus uh, was quoted or was coined. Then the viruses are considered to be on the borderline of living and non-living. That means at times they behave like living and at times they behave like non-living and probably these were not the first organisms to originate because uh, probably viruses and bacteria they originated at the same time the reason behind this is that bacteria are able to survive only in the presence of other living cells because they don't have any mechanism of their own and they perform their life activities inside other living cells so they are very very small in size you can just imagine them that they are even like up to 100 times smaller than a uh, than a bacteria so because of their small size and simple composition they multiply only in other living cells the other living cells are called the host cells and they may be of animals plants or even bacteria that means even the bacteria cannot see virus they are so so small so isn't that amazing what about the discovery of viruses? How were they discovered if they are so, so small? Initially, Louis Pasteur, we are all aware about Louis Pasteur. He was the one who discovered pasteurization. He tried to find out the causative organism for rabies, but he was unable to do so. The reason being that the pathogen was too small to be detected even by a microscope. So we cannot see a virus even with the help of a uh, compound microscope so later in the year 1884 the French microbiologist Charles Chamberland he invented a filter which was known as the pasture Chamberland filter which had very very small pores and these pores were so small that all the bacteria could be removed from the solution that was made to pass through it so obviously whatever was left after filtering must be cont containing the pathogens which are even smaller than bacteria and that is how initially the viruses uh, were discovered later in the year 1892 the russian biologist dimitri ivanovsky so in 1892 the russian biologist dimitri ivanovsky used this filter to study the tobacco mosaic virus so this was the first virus which was actually detected and studied in detail. So if you want to look what a pasture Chamberlain filter looks like, this is what it was. So this was just a filter with very, very small holes, so small that even bacteria can be filtered out of it. Okay, so the first images of virus were obtained only when the electron microscope was invented in the year 1931. And the scientists who were able to do so, they were actually engineers, Ernest Ruska and Max Noll. These were the two engineers, they were German engineers, who f obtained the first images of viruses for the first time using an electron microscope. Would you like to know about the structure of a virus? What a virus actually looks like? Although the shapes may vary, but this is the most common form of virus that is present around us and uh, you can also relate it to the coronavirus which is spreading these days because uh, it somewhat resembles this shape right it may be rod shape otherwise but actually the structure of a virus is very very simple if you want to get into the details it doesn't have any cytoplasm it doesn't have any nucleus and that is why it is not able to carry out any of the life processes on its own so it is actually made up of just a genetic material. What is the genetic material? It could be DNA, which may be a single strand or a double strand. So the DNA or the genetic material may also be in the form of an RNA, 
which may either be linear in shape or circular in form so if you look at the picture given here on your screen very very carefully in this uh, diagram or in this image rna which is represented by the blue color is the hereditary material of this particular virus now this hereditary material or this genetic material is covered by a protein sheath or a protein shell which is known as a capsid so inside there is a genetic material in the form of dna or rna and that genetic material is enclosed by a capsid which is made up of either protein or maybe at times some lipids may also be present now since a virus doesn't have any ribosomes it doesn't have a nucleus it doesn't have cytoplasm that is the main reason why viruses behave as non living or they behave like crystals if they are outside a living cell but the moment they get inside a living cell they start multiplying rapidly they start dividing rapidly and that results in their uh, increase in number as well as their spread now you must have heard a word bacteriophage what does it mean so you can see one on your screen a bacteriophage is a group of viruses that infects bacteria so a virus which can infect a bacteria is known as a bacteriophage now if we talk about human beings we all know that there are several kinds of diseases some of which are bacterial and some of which are viral similarly bacteria may also suffer from some infections and bacteria do not suffer from bacterial infections but they do suffer from viral infections and the causative viruses uh, are known as bacteriophages they were discovered in the early 20th century by the english bacteriologist frederick twort so this was something interesting about bacteriophage now let us discuss about how a virus invades a cell or how a virus infects a cell so the process involved here is just similar to endocytosis so we all know what is endocytosis we have studied it in my previous videos so endocytosis is how a cell takes in some material from its external environment so if you look at the first picture here you can see these small viruses and uh, these small viruses this is the cell of a living organism which has been marked as a body cell so this cell takes in the virus by the process of endocytosis so the virus enters the cell forming a kind of a vacuole so the substances that are present in the cell in the form of like some enzymes or as uh, lysosomes they start digesting the virus so in the process the outer protein coat of the virus gets dissolved and the genetic material is released in the cell so the genetic material is in the form of nucleic acid which may be dna or rna and this nucleic acid then enters the nucleus of the cell so it gets imbibed with the cell's original genetic material that is the dna which was originally present in the cell and the dna or the rna of the virus they get joined together which results in the malfunctioning of the cell the cell ignores its own chemical needs it stops uh, reading its own dna instead it starts reading the dna of the virus due to which the virus starts multiplying inside the cell and in the process after a period of time the cell is destroyed and you can just see how many viruses are now being released out so this is how viruses they multiply inside a living cell and you'll be amazed to know the number of viruses that are present on the earth their number is uh, you can't even imagine more than the number of stars in the solar system not in the solar system i must say in the universe that is the number of viruses that are present on the earth let us now discuss some amazing facts on viruses the first fact says viruses are not alive so this we have already discussed that viruses are able to perform their life processes only if they are present inside a living cell if they are outside a cell then they are considered to be like in the form of crystals because they are just non living they lack any form of energy there is no atp present in viruses there is no carbon metabolism occurring in viruses and they cannot replicate outside a host cell that means they cannot divide or multiply outside a host cell the second fact says that the first human virus to be discovered 
was the yellow fever virus which was discovered by Walter Reed in the year 1901. The third fact says viruses are the most abundant biological entity on the planet. That means their number is more than the number of any other organism present on the surface of the earth. The fourth fact says diseases caused by viruses include measles, influenza, Ebola and the most recent of all that is COVID. The number is much more. I have just picked up four common uh, viral diseases over here. And the fifth and the last fact for this video is that there is no cure for viral diseases. But yes, vaccination can prevent them from spreading. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the bell icon for regular notifications about the upcoming videos. And yes, please, please, please share this with your friends if you found this useful.